Well, folks, it's time to say goodbye to an old friend. I can't even tell you how long I have owned this thing. Uh, maybe I can. Let me look it up real quick on Amazon. Let's see what it says. It says you bought it so long ago that we're not even going to track it for you. Nope, no dice. Maybe I didn't buy it on Amazon. I could have sworn I bought this on Amazon. At any rate, this is the multimeter that I've been using ever since the start of the channel. I use this on a lot of projects around the house. I use it on projects on the car, and I use it in the Radio Shack. Ha! <laughs> Radio Shack. At any rate, um, it's a good little performer, and what I like about it is it's compact fold-up store everything inside design, which wound up being its actual downfall. Um, my favorite part about this is that it just, it does the little tiny bit of things that you need a multimeter for on a very routine basis. It's not special by any stretch of the imagination. It just works. But what the problem is, is that it has started to come apart. Let's zoom in on this real quick, because I like playing with the zoom on my camera. Look at that started coming apart. That's not supposed to look like that. And so now I'm getting unreliable connections. And the reason why it started coming apart is because they made the case just a skosh too small. Let's zoom back out again. Wrong direction. They made the case just a skosh too small, and that's what the problem is. These leads are designed to go up here. And so you put them up there, and they don't properly fit in without jamming them in in the first place and then this bundle of lead wire goes under there and then this whole thing folds up nice and flat like that and there's your profile stick it in your pocket go get to work go do your thing everything's there compared to let's say the next size up in meter which would be something like this and I'm not recommending this one either this one I got from a silent key when I purchased a bunch of equipment from the estate and it, this one actually reads improperly. Uh, so I use this mostly for continuity test or for a backup. But I mean, these, these probes go off in any direction. They do, they do come out like good probes are supposed to come out, but they're not, it's not storable. If I put this thing in my pocket, I'm poking myself, you know, I'm, I'm whining, I get it, it's fine. However, the solution is a nice compact, portable, everyday carry multimeter. So that's why I got this. And now this is gone. And this is in its place, which is the latest thing that I could find that does this. I've, I've linked to this before for a starter meter and picked this one up here for myself. There is a little uh, user's manual inside. Who needs a user's manual? So that takes care of that. Let's get rid of that. And then it comes in this nice little bubble wrap pouch. Let's get rid of that. And it's pretty much the same size and shape. And when you open it up, there is more room inside for the probes. So this should not have the same problem that the Radio Shack version did. And the reason why I got the Radio Shack version was many, many years ago. We're talking in the 90s, the early 90s even. I had a Radio Shack multimeter that I used when I was making up uh, 10 base 2 connections just to verify continuity and everything was good. And that's where I got the idea and the appreciation of stick this thing in your pocket and go do a cable run and don't stab yourself. So here we are. Let's turn it on. Or let's not turn it on because it needs batteries. Let's see what we get in the batteries department. One screw, two screws, and then the back comes off. Oh, that's neat. Just comes off that little hinge area there. All right, so inside we've got a little uh, glue blob brain and a capacitor and some transistors and a fuse on the inside. And then there is a speaker. And then you move that off and unscrew that and you can get the circuit board out to play with the other side. I don't really see much value in that because all of your logic and brains is hidden in there. So we're not gonna do that, but we are gonna pull that out so that the batteries work and then we're gonna put the case back on. So let's do that. All 
I'm going to miss the, the other meter just because it was a Radio Shack branded meter. Radio Shack's back, but I'm not buying another one of those from Radio Shack because they've got some lessons that they need to learn. Alright, so let's see if it works now. Hey, it works now. Alright. Let's pull the probes out. Let's pull the cables out. Let's get this thing down and see if it beeps. All right, she's beeping. Those are the important things. What do I use a multimeter for in this hobby? I really use the continuity test absolutely 100% the most out of every feature that there is on here. Next up, I use the resistor functionality. Resistors have color codes on them. I can read the color codes, it's very difficult. I have some trouble with the tolerance bands and some of the colors look like three or four colors to me. I'm, oh, that was good. Um, and so I don't, uh, I don't usually do that. What I'll normally do is if I need to figure out what value a resistor is, I will, um, I'll just use this multimeter to figure it out and problem solved. And you've seen me do that in, in some of my builds before. I just wanted to show you guys the new meter and uh, and play with it. There are many, many better meters out here. This does appear to have a diode function, um, a voltage function, a and a auto ranging for AC or DC current, as well as a ohms measurement, resistance measurement. So it has all the things I need. Uh, 600 volt measurement max and 200 milliamp fused um, amperage max. So there you go. This is Allosun. There will be a link in the description down below. Hope this helps somebody um, in the future and I'm sure that this thing will automatically turn itself off but we will find out as we do some more videos and some more projects using the new meter. So Allosun meter, welcome to the channel. Thanks for being awesome.